12? You know what rhymes with 5 and 0? Jay's a monkey. Shut it up, Josh! Shut it up, Josh! is the devil! <laughs> what is up fellas the commissioner here and week one is in the books i can't tell you how much i hate this week's book <laughs> sorry kitty we had an epic opening week in the qfl season we had division rivals squaring off a cousin beatdown close games monday night comebacks and then there is the other game you know who you are scoopsky potatoes the featured matchup this week was the Champions Bowl, pairing the last two QFL champions, Mondo Gazungas, and the reigning QFL champ, the Dunning Beach Bomb. Want my shirt, 260, want my shirt, so sexy it hurts. With luck, Blarney, and, well, some more damn luck, Mondo Gazungas pulled off what was regarded by Shum as the greatest upset in the world history. If it was just kickers, that would have won. I would have beat him by like five points. It was only kickers, but it wasn't. It was more big kickers. This is stupid. <laughs> Mondo got epic performances by Matthew Stafford, Tyler Lockett, and hit triple digits, taking down the handsome defending champ. That's me. 103 to 102. Okay, 103 to 83. God damn it. Game two is known as the Cousin Beatdown, pinning the last year's dress wearer, Ryan. You look so good in that dress, Ryan. And this year's up-and-coming manager, Ms. Blitzberg. This game started in epic fashion with both of their quarterbacks scoring 24 points on Thursday Night Football, but Ms. B pulled away with huge performances by her wide receiver duo as they thumped her cousin right on the top of the head, 103 to 70. So Ryan, just to confirm, you want to trim up your hem size two inches next year, right? Because he's going to be wearing another dress, because he sucks. Game three was known as the Monday Night Comeback. This shootout featured last year's number one seed above the clouds versus QFO Legacy Revenge Tour 2020. Little Kyler Murray, because it's about this big, scored a third of Revenge's team total, and Darren Waller scored a late fourth quarter TD on Monday night that sealed the win for him. Congratulations. Above the clouds got no help from Ayuk, who was benched and scored zero points in his five-point loss. Every single person on Above the Clouds bench would have scored five points and he would have won. But it didn't happen that way, did it? Did it! Revenge to a 100 Above the Clouds 95. Game four was the Ezekiel Elliott sucks, but I still won ball. Shake Smackers took advantage of a balanced team attack in spite of Ezekiel Elliott's hard-boiled egg that he laid that night. Well, what do you know had a monster game from Tyreek Hill, but suffered a big loss with season-ending injury to Raheem Mostert. Dude, that really sucks. We're sorry for you. We really are. No, I'm not. Okay, yes, I am. I hate the 40 Badgers. Cheek Smackers is not sending well, what do you know, a sympathy card anytime soon, as he takes care of business 76 to 65. Game 5 was the QB Bowl. It's the best I can do for this game, guys. Tilted Towers took advantage of epic performances by Mahomes and Gronk as they made up 63% of his team's total that week. This is the way he's still trying to navigate his Ghost Raptors team, but had a chance Monday night with Lamar Jackson, who was unfortunately stymied by the Raiders. Tilted Towers wide receivers combined for five points, but he still walked away with the victory. You know what rhymes the 5-0? and oh? I just put the QFL jinx on you, Darren. See what I did, Josh? Woo! Game six was who gives a fuck ball? Just kidding, it was the blowout game of the week and we saved the best one for last. Plump Jack literally could only have started two players, except for his defense, the Bears, which scored zero against my Rams. You heard me right. And he still would have beat Skoopsky due to an unexpectedly underwhelming performance by a few of Skoopsky's starters. One point for Aaron Rodgers, one and a half points for Saquon, one and a half points for Hardman, Two and a half points for Neji. Jesus! You know, this kind of a performance can be chalked up as an aberration, as we all know Scoops is going to break the 100-point mark next week. Who does he play? Okay, not me. Yes, he's going to score 100 points. Last year's QFO runner-up, Plump Jack, starts the season on a strong note, 90-29. to 29.
Yeah. Guys, the season is off and running. I want to thank you all for being amazing participants in the QFL. We had an awesome draft this year, and Jeanette and I are excited to, to announce we're going to be shooting another QFL Halloween special. We're going to bring it this year. We're going to be funny. We're going to be epic. We're going to write a good script, and um, we're going to bring that to you in October. Good luck to everyone this weekend, except for, who am I playing? Plump Jack. What is a Plump Jack? Oh, Plump Jack is a winery. It's supposed to be pretty cool. I love you guys. Hey, yo. There's no E. <laughs> There's no E for Pete's sake. Thanks, honey. <laughs> you're, the, you're the camera person, not the director. Game three was the Monday night Shabaka. Team total and Darren Wall. Darren Wall. <laughs> <laughs> a balanced team attack in spite of Ezekiel Alex. Ezekiel Alex. Cheek Snackers took advantage of a balanced team attack. Oh, my, my honey's laughing at me. No laughing at me, honey. Game four was the Ezekiel Elliott sucks. God damn it. Game four was the Ezekiel Elliott sucks. God damn it. <laughs> Ezekiel Elliott. Yeah, it's camera. two words. Oh. Not Ezekiel Elliott. Get the camera <laughs> Hooked on products. My hooked on products. But Miss Glee. Miss Glee is a Glee is a Glee. There's no album list for it. Yes, there is. It's the second letter. There's Stafford and Lockett. He hit triple dig diggits. Diggits. I dig it when you hit triple diggits. You know what I'm saying, Baxter? Mon <laughs> Hi, honey. She's <laughs> laughing at me. Wait a minute. This year's for trust me. Ma, 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 ma. Ma. <laughs> Okay, stop it. Peace out.